Frank practice is over at Zanvoort and the fastest driver of the day for once was not a Red Bull driver as Lando Norris topped the timesheets in the McLaren. But what does this mean? Well, we're going to be taking a look at the data to see what we learned from a hectic Friday. Now let's get to the video. As usual, I'll be talking about McLaren, Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. Friday at Zanvoort was a fully dry day despite the risk of rain, which meant that we got to see plenty of on-track running as the teams and drivers were getting back into the swing of things after the summer break. But the question is in the midfield, what teams were looking good and what teams were not looking so good? Well, one team that was struggling was the Haas team, as it feels like this weekend they could be the slowest overall team. In first practice, Nico Hulkenberg found the wall on the exit of Turn 1, bringing his session to an early end. And in FP2, Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hulkenberg were the two slowest drivers who actually managed to complete the whole session. And when you compare the times of Hulkenberg to Joe, you can see why. Looking at their fastest laps, it looks like the Haas is really struggling through the faster corners and on the brakes into turn 3. And it looks like the Haas has to back off more than the Alfa Romeo, which shows to me that Haas are struggling with balance at the moment as they are hopefully trying to hone in their setup. It is not only one lap where the Haas car is struggling as well, as their longer race pace does seem like it has some issues, and to show that, I have brought up the long run race pace of Hulkenberg in the Haas, Joe in the Alfa Romeo, Ocon in the Alpine, and Albon in the Williams, and what can we see? Well, this is four completely different teams, but it is Haas which is consistently the slowest, which is something we have become used to recently when it comes to race pace. It is only Friday, but I feel like the signs are not positive for Haas this weekend, and I fear they may struggle based on their current form, and they will be hoping and praying for rain on both Saturday and on Sunday if they are to have any chance of scoring points. One team in the midfield though that had a positive day was the Alpha Tauri team, at least for Yuki Tsunoda, as the Alpha Tauri is slowly but surely finding their way moving forward through the field, Although it does look like for his teammate Daniel Ricciardo, things are not looking so good because after his incident, he was seen struggling with his hand and it has now been confirmed that Daniel Ricciardo will be replaced by Liam Lawson for the rest of the weekend as Ricciardo has sadly broken his wrist. But Sonoda, like I said, did look strong and when you compare the lap time of Sonoda to Bottas, who also had a good day, you can just see where the Alpha Tauri was stronger. Sonoda was able to be later on the brakes and carry more speed into a lot of corners. The Alpha Tauri might be slow in a straight line, but it looks like they are finally improving in the corners, and it will be interesting to see how the weekend progresses for the team that has arguably been struggling the most this year, and it'll be interesting to see how Liam Lawson can get on as he debuts in the Alpha Tauri tomorrow on Saturday in FP3 and how he gets on in qualifying. Another team that looks like they're in for a strong weekend is the Williams team, as they continue to surprise and punch well above their weight, as Alex Albon was third today in FP2, and the Williams looks dialed into the track, at least in dry conditions, as Logan Sargent was able to finish in 12th place as well, which is decent for the American driver. And when you compare the times of Albon to Bottas, you can see just where he's able to find the time. As we've become very used to this year, Williams is very slippery in a straight line, meaning that you can see when it comes to the end of the lap, they launch off the bank section much faster than the Alfa Romeo, and Albon gets a brilliant launch, but it's not just there. He also gets a good run through the fast corners as well, and Bottas is only really faster in the slow and tight chicane. Williams are in a title fight for 7th place with Haas, Alfa Romeo, and Alfa Tauri, so I thought I would bring up the long run of all of the fastest drivers from each team. And what can we see? Well, it looks like Williams in general has stronger race pace here too, and Haas are unsurprisingly struggling the most. However, with rain due on Saturday and Sunday, it will be interesting to see if Williams can keep up the pace, or if the rain will knock them back a little bit, as it does seem like it sometimes does. 
I just want to say if you are enjoying the video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm so close to 3k subs and I would really appreciate it if you help me get there and beyond as we aim for 5k by the end of the season. Now, let's get back to the video and let's talk about McLaren. For McLaren today was a very positive day as Lando Norris was the fastest driver of the day in front of all of the fans dressed in orange, which I'm sure are McLaren fans. He was able to beat Max Verstappen to the fastest time of the day, and so far, things for the McLaren team is looking strong. I am going to compare Max and Lando a little bit later on when talking about Red Bull, as I want to save that for the end. So for now, I am going to take a look at Lando Norris and Alex Albon to see where McLaren were able to find the time on the third fastest driver of the day. As we have become used to in the previous few races, McLaren have become one of the overall strongest teams when it comes to downforce. And because of this, Lando is able to carry more speed through a lot of the braking zones than the Williams. And in general, they look just like they have a much better balance. When you look at the longer runs of the McLaren and compare it to the Mercedes, it becomes a little bit clear that Norris does start strong but his pace starts to dwindle when compared to Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. That being said though, Norris was on the soft tyres, whereas Hamilton is on the mediums, so it could just be the softer tyre versus the medium tyre. But either way, it looks like we are in for a strong fight on Saturday between McLaren, Red Bull and Mercedes, and on Sunday, it could be a good fight between the McLaren and the Mercedes, and potentially with Red Bull too, depending on how things go. For Ferrari, the Dutch Grand Prix so far has been a bit of a disaster, as both Leclerc and Sainz have really struggled for performance and pace. In FP1, Charles Leclerc was in P16, whereas Robert Schwarzman was in P19. And in FP2, Leclerc was 11th and Sainz was 16th. Even though there was 5 places between the two drivers, the times are actually very close, and when you compare the two, you can see just where Leclerc was able to nudge ahead of Carlos Sainz. It is very tight all the way around the lap, right up until the tight chicane, and this is where Leclerc is able to just get ahead of Carlos Sainz. In the long run between the two, there is very little to tell, and also when you compare Lando to Leclerc for race runs, both did their times on the soft tyres, and what you see is actually kind of interesting. Leclerc is definitely slower at the beginning of the stint versus Norris, but as the stint wears on, you can see that Norris starts to fade away a little bit more than Charles Leclerc. So, are Ferrari potentially looking more towards the race than one lap? We will wait and find out more on Saturday, but they do need some more qualifying paces. Right now, their one lap pace is lacking. For Aston Martin today was not the worst day, but it was also not the best day, as Stroll was P8 and Alonso was P10. Let's compare the times of Stroll to Leclerc to see what we can learn. The Aston Martin of Stroll is just a bit faster than Leclerc, which goes to show how tight it was at Zandvoort today, up and down the field. But where can we see Aston Martin's strengths? Well, it is still on the brakes, as Stroll is able to brake later and also carry a little bit more speed than the Ferraris. Even though Stroll was the faster driver between himself and his teammate in the race stints, however, it looks like Stroll was struggling to match Alonso, and you can see that here, as his times are just not as strong as Fernando's, despite the fact that Alonso is on the harder compound of tyre. For Aston Martin, you still get the feeling that they are starting to fade away from the front of the field, but this weekend can be a good opportunity for them to score points over what looks like a struggling Ferrari. For Mercedes, it is another race where it seems like the divide between Hamilton and Russell is growing in terms of pace, as it is another race where Russell is struggling for pace against his teammate, ever since the car was upgraded way back in Monaco. When you look at the lap times from the race pace between the two drivers, you can see that Russell once again does not have the pace of his teammate, but you can see the team split the tyre strategy as they will be looking to see how they can maximise their race performance by using both tyre compounds. And finally for Red Bull, Red Bull are once again looking very strong, but Verstappen was beaten by Lando Norris when it comes to the fastest lap of the day between the two, so let's take a look at the lap and see where Lando was able to just edge out Max Verstappen. 
Lando is strong on the exit of turn three and on the run up the hill as McLaren gets a good exit from the corner, which is something that we can see on the exit of pretty much all of the corners. The Red Bull though is stronger as the lap goes on, but they just couldn't beat McLaren over one lap. However, when it comes to race runs as usual, which you can see here, Red Bull has the edge over the competition. So if Max is not on pole position, then I do feel like it will be likely that he will just blast past when the race gets underway. Because as you can see here, Red Bull and Verstappen have a clear advantage once again when it comes to race pace versus their rivals. So what did we learn from practice? Ferrari are really struggling for pace over one lap, but do look all right over race pace. Williams have excellent pace despite the overall lack of downforce on their car and McLaren are very strong over one lap, but they may be hard on their tyres when it comes to the race stint, and Red Bull are looking dominant when it comes to the race stint, but could be beaten in qualifying. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.